calling for me is is to connect ourselves to nature more. We live in this time where we hear so much about the troubles of the natural world, the troubles of the ocean, overfishing, climate change, and all these problems we know more and more about. So we live disconnected from nature and from these wonders. Finding those ways to, to see it for yourself and to discover it and, and have that moment of wonder and to lift up a rock and, go, and find a chiton stuck to it underneath and, and know that you're probably the first person to have spied that one. That's just a wonderful thing. We have come to North Norfolk to go rock pooling and to look for seashells. Let's have a go. I should lift up some rocks yes, a little bit. Yes, like that's maybe. when things start getting a bit more interesting. Let's have a look. This is the chalk reef. So this is the beginning of this Lake Cretaceous deposit, which you've got all the way along the coast here. And it's why you've got rock pools. Ooh, anemone. Phew, there's some life. There's so much beautiful wildlife we've got here in the UK. You just have to look for it. But almost for me, it's more of a wonderful surprise when you do find these beautiful things. They are like these hidden treasures that you can look for. Well, I've got a bit of a really old fossilised shell. A piece of a belemnite, which is a, the internal shell of a squid-like creature that lived 70, 80 million years ago. Wow. Yeah, that's exciting. This is a common winkle or periwinkle. What you can tell from this one is that it was um, mainly a herbivore from the shape of that hole, right? So it's quite open and, and round and smooth. Mm. So you can kind of tell a bit about the ecology and the, the diet of um, shells just by looking at the shape. So that's one top tip if you're looking for shells and you want to know a little bit more about the animals that made them is that uh, you can quite easily figure out what they ate. And like these ones, up close you can see that the opening to the shell is really round and smooth. There's no obvious kind of holes in it or kind of notches. And that shows you that this was a herbivorous sea snail. Um, but then there's a whole other type of seashells and sea snails, which are carnivores. Oh, I found something. Ooh, it's, a, it's a shell. Ooh. It is. This is a Ooh. dog whelk. Ah, right. They are predators. So they ah. will eat other snails. When it's alive, basically its nose sticks, through, sticks out through that um, through that notch in the shell and they sniff around in the water for prey. They're hunting, they're actively hunting. They have a combination of a really sharp tongue called a radula and, uh, and they also produce acid which softens the shell. If you ever find a shell with a really neat little hole, like a punched hole in it, it has come to a sticky end thanks to um, a predatory shell like a whelk that's come along and uh, grabbed it, drilled a hole and slurped out its insides. That is lovely. This is, this is very cool. I was really hoping we'd see these. It's a chiton, and they have shells and eight plates down their back. And they clump to rocks on rocky, rocky shores like this. And if you knock it off, which I'm not going to do because I feel like that would be a bit mean, it would roll up in a little ball like a woodlouse. A lot of these things we're finding are quite small, um, but they are beautiful and, and they're amazingly well adapted to this kind of crazy turbulent um, environment that we have on the shore. They're pretty tough creatures to be able to live in a place where the tide comes in, big waves come along, try and knock them off, and then the tide goes out and they have to survive when it gets wind blown or boiling hot. Not today, but another day we would. This is extraordinary. I've never seen one of these before. It looks like a seahorse. Yeah, the pipefish, which is a, the relative of a seahorse. It's a, it's, a, it's a big one. I think it's a great pipefish. Wow. Oh my, wow. It's, oh, we can even see it's striped still. Wow. It shows what you can find if you just go look for it. And there are still ex extraordinary wonders to be found. Um, and they're there for you to look. We just have to know how to go and, and do it and spend some time. And you go home at the end of the day, you're just going to feel a bit different because you've spent that time hunting for wild creatures and making those connections and uh, yeah it all comes just a bit closer to home I think it's uh, it's good for you as well as you know just knowing and finding out more about what's around right here on our shores.